So the march of AMD in the x86 server space has been more than impressive. They went from an effective 0% market share a few years ago to double digits and beyond as the company has improved generation on generation. It's not only the products getting better, but we're seeing AMD earning more money, and the enterprise Epic processors are a big part of that. The latest generation of Epic processors, codenamed Genoa, are using the high-performance Zen 4 cores we see in the commercial space. It was released in November 2022, featuring up to 96 cores with chiplets on a TSMC 5 nanometer process. As part of that launch, AMD showcased that it will be expanding this generation into multiple families. We have Genoa X hardware, which is this one, which has 1.1 gigabytes of L3 cache, 96 cores, and that's due to the stacked V cache. And we also have Bergamo here, which is using an optimized core called Zen 4C, built with efficiency in mind. That means for Bergamo, 128 cores or 256 threads per socket offering ultimate density. All these three products are now in the market today, if you hadn't guessed. Well, essentially because I have them. If I can get them, you can get them too. Today, we're showing a different direction for Epic though. AMD is launching Sienna, the fourth of the family, which will enable AMD to expand its market in directions that they hadn't previously gone for. That's New Directions. If you like New Directions, check out our sponsor. A lot of the content on this channel wouldn't be possible without you, the supporters. Many thanks to all who support, and if you're interested in supporting, then we have Patreon, we have a merch store, I have a Substack newsletter, or simply just like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. So with these chips that I have so far, I've run some tests on them, but not yet published results. However, thankfully, I just obtained a new single socket motherboard from ASRock that will be part of a future build, so you better stay tuned for that. But we have a scale of AMD performance from the regular Zen 4 cores in Genoa to the high cache cores in Genoa X to the efficient and dense Bergamo. And let's focus on Bergamo here, which has two main models available, either in 112 cores or in 128 cores. AMD offers this chip to cloud providers looking to make the most of cloud instances. For example, a 3 GHz Zen 4 performance core, but in Bergamo, that's a slightly tweaked version of the core called Zen 4C, also built for 3 GHz and the same performance. The idea here is that if you limit the frequency of your product in the design stage, you can design a core that's twice as dense with the same performance. It's all about physical design. Sienna takes the similar design philosophy as Bergamo. In Sienna, we have up to 64 of these Zen 4C cores, which essentially means it's a lower core count Bergamo. But if that's all this was, then this would be a really short video. What AMD has done with its market research is that customers who can benefit from the efficient nature of Bergamo, but don't need as many cores, they also don't need to ha need as many memory channels or IO resources. As a result, the Sienna chip is actually going to be physically different in size to these three. It's still socketable, but AMD has designed a new socket called SP6 for this. The big reason for a smaller socket is because of that memory and PCIe support. Sienna has a maximum of six DDR5 memory channels, same DDR5 as these, but half as much, for 1.152 terabytes of memory, and that's using 96 gigabyte modules. PCIe 5, there's also 96 lanes in Sienna rather than the full FAT128. And to further reduce complexity, we, Sienna is going to be a single socket platform because these customers don't need dual socket options. The SP6 socket is going to be new. It's 4,844 pins, so it's not backwards compatible with any of these or cooler compatible. However, AMD has said that customer deployments with Sienna are expected to be new, and it sounds like that the socket may be used for multiple generations. I'll be honest here. When I first heard about Sienna and the fact that it's going to be customer focused in things like telecommunications, I half expected it to be a BGA platform, i.e. soldered down. But AMD has given me some hope that we might see vendor motherboards at retail, like my ASRock board for Genoa. And that is good, as long as you can find the chip, of course. But why does Sienna exist in the first place? AMD initially stated that Sienna is built for the telecommunications market and for the edge market. So if you're familiar with community server deployments, for example, on your street, providing local edge services in the UK or in London, they're these big green boxes and you hear lots of noise from them then this is a sort of install base AMD is going after. 
There's a large customer base that have fixed location limits on deployment. For example, there's a, now a lack of data center space within existing infrastructure, and that's becoming a factor in expansion. As a result, we see data centers in odd places that are both limited in power and floor space. Sienna is designed to go after those markets. For example, the server setup in metro systems or in retail space. If you go to a colo today for full racks, the standard power limit is eight kilowatts or 12 kilowatts, and AMD is going after that market where the power limits are hard limits in these environments. So rather than get the full 128 lane PCIe monster with 12 channels of memory, turns out customers of the environments are fully supported with up to 64 cores and six channels of memory, hence Sienna. As a result, AMD is focusing on the performance per system per watt of Sienna, with the data being offered to us, offering up to 2x in that metric or up to 1.8x core density in a power limited rack environment against competition. Here's a SKU list, the breakdown of the 8004 Sienna family of Epic processors. But you can tell they're Sienna because they start with eight. As they're all single socket processors, they all get P in the name. And there are also a bunch of N processors, and these are, this is because they're called NEBS friendly, which is another way of saying that they're built to achieve NEBS compliance. This means high temperature support and such. All these processors all still have the standard Zen 4, Zen 4C features such as AVX 512 support, all processors have 96 PCIe 5 lanes, and all processors have the EPIC standards like Infinity Guard in play. Prices for these chips start at 5,000 US for the 64 core SKU, down to just over $400 for the 8 core part. Now for the technical in the crowd, it's worth noting something here about the IO die. Sienna uses chiplets, in this case four core chiplets, to get 64 cores in the top model and a centralized IO die. The I.O. die, which they all connect through, has all the memory channels and PCIe lanes as with everything else. However, because they're reduced, we asked AMD if this is the same I.O. die as the other EPIC processors, or a cut down version for Sienna. AMD said it's the same, and this helps AMD amortize yield and chip design reuse re re in the I.O. die. So it makes sense. But it also means that Sienna will support all the features that these do, such as two channel and four channel memory interleaving for performance, and CXL 1.1 plus support on half the lanes. As I said before, this SP6 socket is 4,844 pins coming down from the 6,096 in these big epics. Ultimately, I'm waiting for a vendor Sienna board to drop into my lap, like my ASRock one for Genoa, and to see if I can take these CPUs for a spin. I'm so glad they're socketed and not soldered down which means for those of us who like to jump on board a few generations down the line, we might see a soft market for them and for help those for people who are interested in those sorts of builds. From AMD's standpoint, they're meeting the customer at their needs by slightly modifying what is their big Epic platform. The reuse of IO die and chiplets from Bergamo makes sense when we think about scale and costs to design these things. Just designing a chip, compar comparatively, the platform is somewhat negligible. However, AMD does have partners like Dell, Lenovo, and Supermicro, and others, all ready to go with systems in novel form factors that the Edge really craves. Hopefully, we can get these into tests soon, and I can compare the whole family of Epics top to bottom. The question is, what tests do you want me to run? Leave the comment Cinebench or Crisis down below.